The following is a message from the pulpit of the Bible Baptist Church of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, led by Pastor Philip Blackwell. It is our desire that God would use this message to be a help and a blessing to you. If you're looking for a traditional church where Christ is preeminent and the membership is family, we invite you to come and be our guest. Now may God bless you as you listen. All week I haven't been able to get away from these uh, verses of scripture that we're going to read this morning. I think it's appropriate on this Memorial Day weekend. John chapter 15. Once you found your place there, let's stand out of love and respect for the word of God. And we'll take for our text verse 12 and verse number 13. Let's stand together, please, if you're able to do so. If you're not able to do so, you can remain seated. But if you're able to do so, let's stand together. John chapter 15 and verse number 12. The Bible says this in John 15 and verse number 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. Notice there in verse 13, that a man lay down his life. This morning I'm going to be preaching on this thought, a sacrificial spirit, or a spirit of sacrifice. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you this morning, and we're so thankful for what this time represents. Lord, this is a time that we think about our freedoms at Lord, they have been purchased. Lord, they've not been purchased with gold and silver. But Lord, our freedoms as an American has been purchased by the blood of those who have gone before that stood for you and stood for good and stood for justice and liberty and freedom. And God, we're so thankful for all those who have gone before. Lord, this morning we're building upon the foundation that they have set those many years ago. And Lord, I pray you'd help us to not take our freedoms for granted, but God, to use our freedoms and our liberty that's been purchased with such a high price, Lord, that we might use them to glorify your name. Lord, we don't know how much longer we're going to have these freedoms that have been purchased. Lord, I pray that we would have them till you would come again. But God, I know that we're living in a fallen state. And Lord, I know that these liberties and freedoms could be taken away from us at any moment. So Lord, help us to redeem the time. And Lord, help us this Memorial Day weekend to be thankful for those who have, Lord, gone before and Lord, died, Lord, so that we could have the liberty that we enjoy. Lord, we also thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We were in bondage to sin. Lord, we were on our way to hell. But Lord... He stepped in and He died on a cross that we might have eternal life and might have liberty in Him and God to be freed from the bondage of sin. And Lord, we're so thankful for what Jesus did for us on the cross. Lord, we're also thankful for the men and women who paved the way for Bible Baptist Church, men who have uh, hazarded themselves, Lord, who have gave and spent and done all, Lord, that this church might exist And Lord, as we think about on Memorial Day, though it is a military holiday, I think about those Christian soldiers who have served you so well through the years. Lord, that we might uh, know the Word of God, and God, that we might have a church on this piece of property. Lord, we thank you for their sacrifice, and Lord, them giving of themselves for your glory. Now, Lord, I pray this morning that as we continue to talk about a spirit of sacrifice, Lord, I pray that we as your people would pay close attention to the Word of God today. And Lord, I pray as the Holy Spirit speaks, we, your people, would listen. And God, I pray when the invitation time is given that you would help us to find a place around the altar, God, that we might be thankful for those who have displayed such a sacrificial spirit in our lives. But Lord, all so that we too might desire, Lord, that we would have the same kind of spirit in days to come. Lord, we sure love you this morning. God, we love this church. We love these people. And God, we desire to be a help and a blessing. And so, Lord, we pray you'd fill me with the Spirit of God and use me that I might be a help, Lord, to these your people. God, be with us this morning. Help us, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Now, while many on this Memorial Day weekend are spending time with family, maybe at a lake or in some other enjoyable endeavor, that is not really what this holiday is about. Memorial Day is not about having fun with family, though I am for fun, and and I am very much for spending time with friends and family. Memorial Day is a federal holiday that was set aside uh, here in the United States for the remembering of the people who died while serving in, the, in this country's armed forces. 
It is said that from the beginning of the Revolutionary War in 1775 up to our present hour, there have been over 1.3 million people that have died in combat. Don't let that number uh, just go past you. and just I want you to think about 1.3 million people have died to preserve the freedoms that you and I uh, enjoy. That to me is almost an unfathomable number, thinking of that many people that have died so that you and I this morning could be uh, in the house of God and we could hear the word of God and we could be free from persecution. What a blessing it is to know that such people have lived and died uh, so that we could enjoy that freedom. The people of World War II was called the greatest generation and indeed they really were for it was through the foundation that they laid that you and I are enjoying much freedom that we have today. And would to God that God would put in the heart of every one of his children a spirit that that those of that great generation had. I'm talking about a sacrificial spirit, a spirit where we're willing to put others before us, uh, that the Lord might be glorified and that others might be blessed uh, because of our life. See, in our day that we live, we are really very selfish. Much in our society is geared toward what's in it for the individual or what's in it for me. But the fact of the matter, whether it's a country or a church or even in a family, it should not, your, your life should not center, center around what you desire and what you want. Your life should center around, number one, the will of God, but also what would be a help and a blessing to another. One of the reasons that the Lord uh, instituted a local New Testament church, yes, it was for the individual, betterment and to become more like Jesus Christ and I'm thankful for that but you'll find in the New Testament that there are more commands concerning what we're to do one towards another than necessarily what we're to do regarding ourselves uh, when we gather together in a local assembly. See, Christ set a pattern and that pattern was one of self-sacrifice and in Romans 12, 1 he gave us a directive, a divine directive uh, through the Apostle Paul that teaches each child of of God that we're to live with a sacrificial spirit, meaning that we're living unto God and we're living for the betterment of others. Romans 12, 1, the Bible says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice. So the Lord wants us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto him. The apostle Paul was a great, uh, great example of this spirit where we we find the Apostle Paul in Philippians 2.17. He says this. He says, Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Paul said this. He said, Even though that he, he is used of people and though he has to sacrifice himself so that others can increase in the faith, the Bible says here that Paul said, I joy and rejoice with you all. You'll find that he says in another place that he would gladly say spend and be spent for the people of God. And friend, I want you to understand this morning that that is the spirit of Christianity. We find it in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We find it in the person of the Apostle Paul. We also find it in that church at Philippi. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 18, here's what Paul said about that great church that was in Philippi. He says, But I have all and abound, and am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. The church at Philippi was not a rich church. The church at Philippi did not have everything that this life uh, uh, this life can offer. But what we find in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 18 that the saints that were there in Philippi sacrificed so the apostle Paul could have that uh, which he needed to do his ministry. So what I'm saying this morning, hey, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, what you'll find example after example of God's people that are willing to sacrifice of themselves for the will of God and also for the betterment of other people. Even a Democratic president said years ago, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. 
See, that's a spirit in which our country was founded and grounded. And it's the same spirit in which God's people ought to live. It's not what about I can receive from everything. It's about what my life can do for the glory of God and for the betterment of others. Now here in John chapter 15, there are three considerations that will enlighten us concerning a sacrificial spirit. I want us to look at them and we'll be done. Number one, I want you to notice the source of a sacrificial spirit. Where does a spirit of sacrifice comes from? Where does it come? It does not come from the flesh because our flesh is very selfish in nature. Your flesh is very selfish in nature. You don't believe that? Get you a hammer and hit your thumb and see if you're not very selfish in nature. You are. I am. By nature we are selfish. Matter of fact, you find babies after they're born, they're even selfish in nature. Mama needs sleep but the baby wants to be held in the middle of the night. You know what that is? That is a selfish nature that's ingrained because of a sinful nature. And you and I have that within us. So what is the source of a sacrificial spirit? How can you and I develop that in our life? Where does it come from? Well, look at verse number 12. The Bible says this, This is my commandment that ye, notice this four-letter word, love one another. As I have, notice this five-letter word, loved you. Look in verse 13. Greater, another four, the same four letter word, love, hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. What is the, the, the source of a sacrificial spirit? Well, it's found in that four letter word, love. Listen, if you love your country, you're willing to die for it. If you love your family, you're willing to die for it. If you love your church, you're willing to do whatever you can uh, that, that, that the church might benefit even if it costs you something. Uh, years ago, I remember uh, hearing about the church there in Cincinnati. When it was first started, no one would let them uh, 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 rent a place because it was a very Catholic area. Well, the man that felt like God was leading him to that Anderson Township part of Cincinnati believed God wanted him to plant a church, so they prayed about it. And there's only one place they could meet, and that was in the basement of a liquor store. That's the only place they could go uh, to have a church. So there in the basement of a liquor store, the Salem Baptist Church began right there. But what we find is they outgrew that little, that little basement area, and they needed a place. They needed a place to serve. They needed a place where they as a church could worship everybody together. Well, I remember reading in the minutes how men in that church went out and took personal loans that the church could procure property and build a building. You know what those men displayed? They displayed that they loved their church. And they were willing to do anything they could for the betterment of that congregation and that church. They were even willing to take a financial hit so that the church could move forward. Now I'm not talking about money this morning, but I will tell you this, where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. That's what the Bible teaches. And the fact is this, if you love your country, you're willing to sacrifice for it. Hey, if you love your church, you're willing to sacrifice for it. Think about a mother, a mother who loves her family. She's willing to do everything that she can so that her family can be provided for. She's willing to work. She's willing to make sure the meals are ready. She's ready, uh, willing to sacrifice of her sleep, of her time, of her energy, and even of her own life that her family might be benefited from it. Hey, you know what that is? That's a spirit of sacrifice. Where does it come from? It comes from a spirit of love. You know, that's the source of our sacrifice. If you do not love, then you will not sacrifice. Have you ever wondered why God sacrificed His Son? What a sacrifice. Me and Brother Adrian was talking about, I believe it was yesterday, how hard it would have been for one of us to have given one of our children for another. It would have even been even harder because, think about this, Jesus didn't, or God didn't give His Son uh, uh, for the life of His friends, did He? The Bible says we were at enmity with God. So you know what Jesus, God did? God gave His Son to those that uh, allowed His Son to die for those that hated Him. That's an amazing thought. How could God do that? Why would God give His only Son, only begotten Son? Well, the Bible tells us in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Why did God sacrifice so much? It was because of His love. Have you ever wondered why Jesus Christ would sacrifice Himself? Hey, no one ever lived like Jesus lived. 
But friend, no one ever died like Jesus died. You say, well, preacher, a lot of people died on the cross on the cross back during the Roman Empire. But let me say this: not one of those people that died had the sins of the whole world placed upon him. Not one. Not one person that's died except for the Lord Jesus Christ has had every sin placed upon him uh, when he was dying there on that tree. Hey, why would the Son of God, God the Son, introduce uh, endure such a contradiction of sinners? Why would he endure having his beard plucked out? Why would he allow himself to be beat with a cat of nine tails? Why would he suffer? Why would he bleed? And why would he die on a cross? Well, the Bible tells us in Galatians 2.20, I'll not read the whole verse, but it talks about the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The Bible talks about in Hebrews that he looked, when he looked to the cross, he looked to it with joy. I don't know about you, but if I knew I was going to the electric chair tomorrow, I wouldn't be looking forward to that with joy. How could Jesus, who was going to die on the cross and suffer such a contradiction of sinners and endure all that He would endure, why would He say to God the Father, not my will, but Thy will be done? Why would He go through all that He went through? Well, friend, He loved us. That's why He gave Himself for us. Have you ever wondered why some believers sacrifice their time to be at a church service every time the doors open? It's because they love the Lord Jesus and their church. Have you ever wondered why some uh, in the church will sacrifice their earnings? I believe it's because they love the Lord. They love their church. Hey, have you ever pondered why some uh, who are barely making it are willing to do so much at the house of God? Those who really don't have any more time, they're making time for the church. You wonder why folks are willing to sacrifice of their times and talent and treasure uh, to the church? It's because they love their Lord and they love their church. The fact of the matter is this, as a Christian, when if I'm, if I'm doing what I do out of love, then I'm willing to sacrifice in order to do it. See, where does this uh, sacrificial spirit come from? What's the source? It's love. I mean, if you love your wife, you're willing to sacrifice everything you've got for her. Hey, if you love your children, you ready? Yeah, you're 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 willing to sacrifice everything that you have for them. Hey, I'll tell you this, friend. As long as I have my children, are going to have. You know why? Because I love them. As long as I have my wife, is going to have. You know why? Because I love her. As long as I have my church, is going to have. You know why? Because I love my church. And what I'm saying is this: a spirit of sacrifice comes from a heart of love. It's not that you have to do these things, but you joy and rejoice with others that you can do these things. See, I'm talking about a spirit of sacrifice. You know, we think about our brave soldiers who died for their country. Do you realize that? Most of them were afraid. In World War II, there was a man by the name of Carl Longhouse. You don't know Brother Carl, but Brother Carl was a, a member of the church in Cincinnati that I pastored before he passed away. Brother Carl and I were sitting down and we were talking, and I didn't realize that he had been in World War II, and he brought out all of his medals that he won there. He even showed me a purple heart, and he told me this. He said uh, that that day at the Battle of the Bulge, he remembers how scared he was there at the Battle of the Bulge. You, if you know anything in history about that battle, very bloody and deadly battle. And he said, he told me about how afraid he was. And here's what he said. He said, Preacher, I was able to make it through that Battle of the Bulge without getting shot once, but once we got through, there accidentally shot myself in the leg <laughs> he didn't get shot by the enemy he accidentally shot himself but I remember how proud he was of his service there how proud he was to be at the battle of the bulge and how proud I was just to know a man that was so brave now why would men go and in spite of their fear and danger of death a fight for their country I believe it's because of the great love that they had for our country See, the fact is this, if we're going to live in a sacrificial spirit, then you know what? We need to learn to start loving some things. As Christians, oftentimes we have such cold hearts, don't we? We've gotten hurt, so we build up something around our heart. Well, that person at church hurt me, so I'm not going to love them people at church anymore. They build something around their heart. Or maybe a husband and wife are having problems, and the husband builds up around his heart so that he doesn't love his wife like he ought because he doesn't want to be hurt again, or vice versa. It may be the wife that does the same thing to her husband. I don't know. But so often as Christians, we build around our heart. We guard our heart so well so that we don't let anyone in. But listen, that's no way to live. You say, well, I've been hurt. Well, that just simply means that you've loved. If you've been hurt, it's because you've loved. 
You say, well, what do I do, preacher? Here's what you do. You do the same thing that most pastors have to do. In spite of the hurt, you love anyway. Because that's what's right. And I found this. If you love people, you will react and act in a different manner than even they deserve. The source of love, or the source of a sacrificial spirit, that's love. Number two, look at verse 12. The standard of a sacrificial spirit. You know what? The Lord Jesus Christ has set a standard for us concerning having a spirit of sacrifice. Look what it says in verse number 12. This is a hard verse. The Bible says this, This is my commandment, that ye love one another. And look at the end of this verse. Loving one another is okay, I can love you. (laughs) That's no problem. But look at the end of the verse. That ye love one another as I have loved you. What a standard. What a standard of love. Hey, we just saw that the only source of a sacrificial spirit is love. And now the standard of that sacrificial spirit is that you and I are to love as Christ loved us. We're to show others the love that we have received. And by the way, if you do not know Christ as Savior, it's an, impossi- it's an absolute impossibility for you to love as Christ loves because you do not know the love of Christ. It's impossible. But friend, if you've been saved by the grace of God, you know the love of Christ. And then you are responsible to to show that love to others. Hey, I want you to think about Christ's love for us. Think about this standard that Christ has set. Hey, there's the depth of Christ's love. That means this, that He loves us so deeply that He willingly offered Himself as a sacrifice so that we could live forever. Ephesians 5, 2 says, And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. That's the depth of God's love. How far would the love of Christ go? Hey, how far would His love reach? Well, it's so deep that He's willing to offer Himself a sacrifice for our sins. That's the depth of His love. Think about the breadth of Christ's love. His love is so wide that it includes the whole world and everyone who's ever lived in it. That's how wide the love of God is. That's the scope of Christ's love. Hey, He loves us that every person who's ever been born into this world, even those that crucified Him, He loved them even still. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that He died for all, and they which should live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them, And rose again the breadth of Christ's love. It's so wide that it includes everybody. Think about the length of Christ's love. You know what the length of His love is? His length of His love will extend throughout eternity. That means that His love never stops. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then it gives a long list of things that he's asking, Shall these things separate us from the love of Christ? And then you find at the end of it, it says that nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, Christ set a standard. See the goal? I am to love you as Christ loves me. I am to love you the way Christ would love me. I am to love you. The depth of my love is meaning that I should be able, I should love you so deeply that I'll do whatever it is to be a help to you. By the way, you know if a church has that spirit, hell itself can't stop it. If we have the spirit where we're more concerned about each other and helping each other and being a blessing one to another, hell itself cannot stop a church like that. You know why? Because that's the spirit of Christ. Hey, we ought to love so deeply that we're willing to sacrifice whatever it takes for the need of another. Hey, the breath of Christ's love, we ought to love so wide that includes everybody in the church and everybody that we meet in spite of what they say or do unto me. The length of God's love, it should extend throughout eternity. I should love as Christ's love and my love should never change. Preacher said this years ago, he said there's nothing that you can do to make God love you anymore or any less. And you know that's true. 
His love is going to extend throughout eternity. What a standard Christ has set for us. What a goal. You say, preacher, I've fallen short of that goal. Hey, join the crowd. I have fallen short of that goal. But that is a goal that I'm pressing toward. And that is a standard that you should be pressing toward. That we might love like Christ would love. So that we can have that sacrificial spirit that was evidenced through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, we see number one, the source of a sacrificial spirit, the standard for sacrificial spirit. But number three, the supremacy of a sacrificial spirit. Spirit of sacrifice is the greatest spirit that you can live with. Look in verse 13. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this. You see that? You see the supremacy? It's the greatest thing that you can do. There's no greater way for love to be displayed than for you to be willing to sacrifice yourself for another. You know, most people will love as long as they're being loved. Most people will love as long as they're being benefited by the person that they're loving. But do you realize the love of God, His love toward us goes without really any benefit for Him? Think about it. What does He get from us? Broken vessels? (laughs) He gets broken vessels? What does he really get in the deal? When someone buys something, they're expecting a good exchange with whatever they put into it, the money-wise. But listen, what did God get when He got us? He got someone that he has to bear along with. He got someone that he has to deal with over and over and over and over again about the same sins. He deals with one that continues to uh, to do that which displeases him. Think about it. What does Christ get? What does God get from us? Well, listen, it's all about the display of his love. A sacrificial spirit demonstrates love in such a way that it cannot be matched. Most say, I'll love you as long as you love me. But God says, I'll love you whether or not you choose to love me. What a spirit. There's no greater way to live than that. Chair, you know what charity is? You know the King James Bible, the translators had the word love. We just read several times with the word love. But when you get to 1 Corinthians 13, you'll find them change and use the word charity. Now, why? Why did they change that charity? I know the modern virgins changed that back to love. Why did they use the word charity there? Because charity is that highest form of love. You know what charity is? Charity is sacrificing of yourself for the need of another. Charity is giving of yourself, expecting nothing in return. That's what charity is. And friend, that's the kind of love that God has toward us. And that's the kind of love we ought to have toward others. See, if you and I love Christ, uh, if, if you and I love as Christ loves, there's no higher display of that. Hey, there's no greater sacrificial spirit than that. And the truth is this, if we love as Christ loved, then sacrifice is no sacrifice at all. It's a joy. Let me read a couple of verses and we'll be done. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy... That was set before him. Endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, I'm thankful that God loved me. Thankful that Jesus loved me. And I'm thankful that he had a spirit of sacrifice about him. Can I encourage you this morning? Let's live that way. Let's be willing to go the next step. Not just go a mile, but be willing to go twain. Not just get hit on one cheek, but being willing to turn the other also. You know what that is? That's the Spirit of Christ. You and I, we have the Spirit of Christ in us. The Bible calls it the Holy Spirit that. The hope of glory. And what a blessing it is to know that we can have the same spirit of sacrifice that our Savior, the Lord Jesus, had. Let me ask you, how's your heart this morning? Do you have that kind of spirit? Or are you like your pastor in something that needs to be worked on? Thank you for listening to this message today. It is our prayer that this sermon fed your soul, lifted your spirit, and encouraged you in your walk with God. And as we conclude, please remember, there's always a place for you at Bible Baptist Church.